Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy of the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent at G Show, where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're going to be heading back into one of my favorite factions, just because I need to count a lot for that faction to actually work properly. Syndicate, Syndicate, the coin based producing and spending faction which is also going to be very very aggressive today because today we're going to be taking a look at the bloody bounty bash deck so the bbb deck let's get uh, straight into that deck build to take a look so the bloody bounty bash looks like it sounds a little bit like the deck that we did a few weeks ago the uh, money hunters deck i think that was called so uh that is not entirely the case i think almost half of the cards are now different there are of course similarities but we went full witch hunter with this deck uh including almost every new card that was added um, this is the deck list right now. We're going to be going through each and every single card in full detail in the beginning of this deck guide. But if you're not interested in that, you know what all these cards do. I can't teach you anything else about this. Then, no problem. You can head straight to the example matches using the timeline down below. And you can check out some real game plans when you're using this deck. The link to the Play Gwent website is also in the description down below. So you can head straight there, import it into your own game, and then just check out the example matches to see how you would be using this. But for everybody else, let's go through each and every single card in this deck. So first up, we're going with the Vigilantes. Vigilantes are simple engine cards for four provisions, uh, with four power, of course, which is basically something that is really, really coming uh, apparent, becoming apparent in this game that uh, most of the uh, Four provision cards also have four power, but whenever a bounty is placed on an enemy unit, you automatically damage it by two. So if you have a Vigilantes on the board, that's two damage. If you have both of them on the board, that's four damage automatically on any bounty that you apply. Which could be very powerful if your opponent doesn't really have removal options. And there are a few decks in this meta that actually don't have removal options. So, yeah very dangerous. Then of course we're continuing along the Witch Hunter archetype. The Witch Hunter himself for power for four provisions as well and on deploy you place a bounty on an enemy unit. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Then bloody good fun is just a way for us to get rid of our excess coins for profit. Uh, so you gain four coins and then you spend all of them and damage an enemy by the same amount. So basically allowing you to kill something upwards to uh, nine points, which could become very handy. Because uh, most of these cards actually give you bounties on high power units, so you do really want to be able to destroy those. Next one is the Witch Hunter Executioner, definitely not a nice man, but three power for five provisions. Gives you two coins at the start when you play him, and for one coin he can give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn, so basically one of our spenders, but if the target has a bounty, you can damage it by one instead. So no bleeding, you can kill anything with bounty as long as you have the coins for it. And then Purge, the new crime card, is uh, as we talked about in the card review, you can check out that video as well, but in the card review we talked about the lore of this card as well, but aside from that this is a very powerful card, especially in this deck. You can damage an enemy unit by three and you increase the damage by one for every witch hunter on your side of the battlefield. So if you have two, this is the same power as payday. If you have five, this just straight up does eight damage. If you kill something with that damage, on top of all of that, you also place a bounty on the highest power enemy unit. If you have Vigilantes on the board, that will also gain uh, some extra damage. So this is just a very smooth damage and bounty cycle. And then of course we want to be torturing some people as well. That sounded really, really terrible. I meant of course units on the board. And then we have the Confession Extractor to do just that. Gives you 5 coins and while it is in your graveyard, you damage an enemy unit by 1 every, every time you place a bounty on an enemy unit. And it can do that three times. So basically giving you eight points for this five mission card, five coins and three damage spread out over the course of the match. The next up is Hysteria. Hysteria is another crime card that allows you to place a bounty on an enemy unit and then damage it by three. So not that powerful if you think about it, but it does combine both the bounty and damage. If the target that you're targeting already has a bounty, you double the damage to six. So if there is a bounty on that card, it's better than Payday. If it's not, you get 3 damage and a bounty. So I feel like with this and a Purge, Payday basically has lost its value kind of a little bit. It feels like Payday isn't that useful anymore. Then we have Kurt. Kurt, uh, of course, a very 
important in this deck because he serves a double function. So six power for six provisions. If you put him on the melee row, you can apply a bounty to an enemy unit. Of course, that's what we're here for. But if you don't need the bounty or you would like to purify units, you can do that as well if you put him on the ranged row. Purifying is very important for a bounty deck. Because um, if your opponent plays units that are only veiled, constantly veiled, and you can't do anything about that. So that is why the uh, there is actually two cards in this deck that can purify units. Next up is Ignatius Hail. I was hesitant about this card at first, but the amount of bounties that we can do in this deck is actually pretty high. So as a finisher, Ignatius Hail is not that bad. So 12 power, 6 provisions, and on deploy you damage his units by its tribute cost. Its tribute cost is 9. So, by default, this card is just 3 points. If you pay the Tribute cost, you cancel the Deploy ability, basically. Um, yeah, the, the, the Tribute ability is useless unless, unless you really want to spend your coins on something still. But, its passive ability is whenever you place a bounty on an enemy unit, you reduce this unit's Tribute cost. So, every bounty makes this card stronger. And, uh, well, his um, superhero persona, Witch Hunter persona, is basically the better version of this. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then, of course, Horses Freak Show. We can't omit this card as well. For our one armor for seven provisions, you gain two coins. And for every two coins you spend on this card, you damage an enemy unit by two. So, basically, another damage dealer giving us uh, three damage dealers at this point. Then, just to have another spender in the bag, Gallard Blindheim is never a bad choice unless you're facing um, Syndicate or Nilfgaard that have poisons of their own. But 5 power for 7 provisions gives you 2 coins, and for 1 coin you can poison an allied unit and boost it by 2. Um, if you are at Adrenaline 5, so 5 cards or less remaining in your hand, you can only use this ability once every turn. Um, otherwise, you can use it as long as you have coins. So basically giving you a 50%, 100% uh, markup on your coins, which is the only card that does this. And then Adelbech to Kalkstein. Kalkstein is the uh, second purified card that I was talking about. Kalkstein is actually pretty powerful if you want to use him as a utility card, because it's the only card in the game that can allow you to target purifies multiple times in the same turn um, on either side of the board. So Caretaker can do that over the course of many turns, but Kalkstein can do this in the same turn. So you can purify three specific units for six coins if you want to. Very handy to take care of Defenders and Veil. Vale. So uh, yeah, I think it's, it's unmissable in a bounty deck and I kind of overlooked him the last time we did the uh, bounties. Then we have Tamara Stranger, another card that you see played all that much. She uh, starts at five power. Uh, and on deploy, she boosts all allied witch hunters by one. All allied witch hunters, excluding herself. Um, and only, of course, on the board. But if you pay three coins, she boosts all allied witch hunters in hand, deck, and on the battlefield by one instead. So definitely the better options, which is also why we have Tiger's Eye as our stratagem. Because that gives us five coins, which we can immediately use on the tribute of Tamara Stranger. Of course, the earlier you use her, the better. Um, if you don't use her early, it's probably better to just go for the deployability, because three coins is actually pretty hefty to boost all the witch hunters and give you yeah, the benefit of this card. But still, a very good card in this deck is most of the units will be witch hunters. Talking about which the mother of the Hale family has arrived in this game as well. So seven power for seven provisions, which is already giving you your provision value back. But on the deploy, you draw up to two of Octavia's sons to your hand and then shuffle back the same number of cards. We talked about this lore-wise in the card review video as well, but the Hale family is a family that came to Novigrad and uh, from one of the Nilfgaardian provinces actually, and uh, started a business where they persecuted whomever they pleased and just said, okay, that's a witch, we know, that's a witch, and just executed them. Uh, so that's um, their plan, but they did so with monikers. So Octavia Hale is the witch finder, we'll be talking about her as well. Fabian Hale is the scoundrel when he goes out, and Ignatius Hale is the brute. With Octavia Hale, you can draw up to two of the three cards that we have here um, in, uh, from the deck into your hand, and then this, uh, put two cards back into your deck. So you can put the brute and the scoundrel in your hand if you don't have them yet which is just very powerful. You can also choose how many of them you draw, so you're not forced to draw two, uh, or even any of them. 
Um, but yeah, if you don't have those two, you definitely want them in your hand because they're your powerful, most powerful cards. And then Tavern Brawl, very handy to take out high-powered units. Uh, it is a crime to force an enemy unit to duel an adjacent unit for seven provisions. Uh, if your opponent forgets about this card, this can be very, very powerful, especially with something like Malacene in the game. Um, they usually pair that with something like a uh, Hermit. Um, that can really, really hurt your opponent. And then Graydon, of course, is the other card that gives you the opportunity to kill a very high-powered unit. So 3 power for 9 provisions and on deploy, if you put them on the melee row, you destroy an enemy unit with a bounty. So giving you, killing that unit, giving you the coins from the bounty, but if you pay 5 coins as well, you boost Graydon himself by the unit's base power. So if you kill something like, um, I don't know, you kill something like a Griffin for a 9 power, you can just pay 5 coins and you will boost Graydon by 9 when you kill that Griffin. So yeah, very, very powerful card, but of course requires a bit of setup, can be bricked if you're not being careful with this card. And then the Scoundrel, so Fabian Hale, his um, Witch Hunter persona, 12 power for 10 provisions, and on deploy you summon the top bronze unit from your opponent's stack to the opposite row and place a bounty on it. If you pay two coins, you can actually choose the bronze unit you summon from your opponent's deck, possibly disrupting some of your opponent's um, cards, you know, some of their flows. Um, for one coin, you also can use his V ability, where for every coin you spend, you damage the enemy unit with bounty by one, meaning that you can bypass defenders. So you just tap the scoundrel and he will damage that unit wherever it might be. And now we have one more spender because of course we really need a few spenders that don't rely on dealing damage and Jacques of course is the perfect card to do that. So it's the evolution card of Syndicate, so meaning that um, in round 2 he changes into Jacques the Aldersberg and in round 3 he changes into Jacques Grandmaster. We are a devotion deck so we will be reaching this. He has Veil, 4 coins he gives you for six, uh, for 6 power as well, for 12 provisions. And if you spend those 4 coins on the Tribute ability, you spawn two Flaming Rose Footmen, which have 3 power and 1 armor. And you can use his V ability where you spend 1 coin and just boost himself by 1 coin. So your remaining coins can go to Jacques if you don't have any targets left. Then we have the Witchfinder, Octavia Hale's Witch Hunter Persona, 7 power for 12 provisions, one of the strongest cards in Syndicates these days. You on deploy, you spawn two, uh, 3 Syndicate Crowns, giving you 3 more coins that you can spend whenever you want, that don't go into your bag, so don't go into your 9 coin limit, um, but you can use whenever you want. At the end of your turn as well, uh, you um, give the highest power unit uh, on the board, enemy unit on the board, bounty, if there of course is no bounty uh, available yet. So this is basically a bounty engine, which allows you to, as long as this card is on the board, just keep placing bounties. Uh, the only task that you have at that point is uh, after the Witchfinder assigns the uh, dedicated target that should be killed, you are just responsible for killing it, because that's not something that she can do. And then one of her burly sons, the Brute, is actually uh, benefiting from all that. He doesn't do damage directly, which is a bit weird considering his card art. But he starts at zero profit and a zero boost. But the boost is equal to the base power of the last destroyed unit with a bounty. This last destroyed enemy unit with a bounty. So again, if you kill the Griffin, that's a nine point boost. Uh, already giving this uh, card 15 points. And uh, whenever you place a bounty on an enemy unit, you increase this unit's profit by one. So that's why Ignatius Hale himself, so this is still Ignatius Hale by the way, um, increases his power based on the amount of bounties you place. The, the Brute gives you coins for the amount of bounties you've played throughout the game. Um, and that's it for the cards here. We also have Tiger's Eye as our stratagem, so we just gain five coins from that, giving us a little bit of a head start if you want to get tank away. And then our leader ability is something we haven't talked about just yet, because we rarely use this ability, by the way. So blood money, on order, you damage an enemy unit by 8, and you gain coins equal to the excess damage. If you kill something of 6 power, you will gain 2 coins as well, because that's the excess. Very good to take out one of the higher power units that uh, might get struck with one of your bounties. And uh, just an all round good ability in this uh, this archetype, the bounty archetype. Um, just giving you a little bit of extra damage if you can't just reach that high powered unit to kill it in one go. So uh, let's uh, head into an example match and uh, yeah, see how we play this deck. Because it's not the simplest deck to actually play with. Okay, first up is hand boosting. Might struggle a bit with that, but uh, the most important thing will be that we keep Graydon. We have Graydon in hand already, which is really good. 
Uh, we have Tamara as well and we start. So we actually are in a very good position here. Let's put Vigilantes and Confession Extractor at the ready as well. A bit of purifying might not be that bad either. Um, and other than that, I feel like we have a bit too much of the bulky cards here. Yeah, let's do with this. We don't have, we need another bounty card. We don't have bounty cards. Holy crap. Okay, that's that's a little bit better. So no confession extractor for me. Let's use the tiger's eye and then go into Tamara Stranger immediately from the very start and boost every single witch hunter in our deck by one. Yeah, we don't have a lot of uh, bounty cards at the moment. We only have two. Which might hurt a little bit. But yeah, let's put Vigilantes down. Vigilantes will be helping us out in doing a bit more damage than you would otherwise do. And now we get the Vrijheid Saboteur. Um, I could just use Hysteria now. Yeah, Hysteria seems like the better option. Um, so there we go. That's going to die immediately. And we get six coins out of that. Because we need to get rid of that hand boosting. That hand boosting needs to die. Nature's Rebuke is going to hit us in the face. And that's not that bad, actually. Um, I can use Gallard now. I'm just going to poison Tamara. And get a bit more coins on the board. We just want to be um, hitting those, um, yeah, those hand boosting cards. And there we go. The first and second Invigorate hit is coming in. Which we'll definitely be feeling later on. But first, what's our next card going to be from our opponents? They need to catch up with 9 points. We definitely want to try and take round 1 if we can. Uh, and keep Graydon. Because Graydon will be handy to take care of um, yeah, one of the bigger cards. We got Circle of Life on Gallard. That is fine. I'm actually going to use the Scandrel now. Um, because that could get us another bounty. It is a bit early though, but there's no real good target otherwise. I could use the Witch Hunter Executioner, but he's just going to die. So let's just use the Scoundrel, pay the tribute, and let's see what we can get. Uh, I'm actually going to get the Sorceress of Dolblatana. They're all four powers, so that doesn't really matter. Um, but we can do this. There we go. Um, and then we can boost the Scoundrel even further with the Poison from Gallard. There we go. So 24-3. So that should be pretty good. We get Sirsa. Sirsa starts at 4, right? Yeah. We could just play the Witch Hunter Executioner in an attempt of getting our opponent to pass. Our opponent is very impatient at the moment. But we are pretty far ahead. And usually a deck like that is Devotion. Just because of the fact that they want to have uh, Torque in their hand. And then we get Sheldon Skaggs already hitting for 5 on the Witch Hunter Executioner. And they actually get that off. But Tavern Brawl is going to be pretty good here. Um, so 9 on 11 is 2 back. So that's going to be 13 points. Which is pretty good. So Sirsa into Sheldon Skaggs. There we go. 13 points difference. 12 points ahead. So they're either going to be forced to play one of the cards that they really don't want to play, or they're just going to pass. I would pass in their stead. Because play Torque now, when you don't have them later, play... Um, okay, Call of the Force, that's one point on top of that. Okay. Um, I think it's time for me to pass. There's no real good card that I can use here. Because the Purifies might actually come in handy later on to get rid of a Defender. But now, yeah, they need to play 5 points. The question is, will they be able to play 5 points without spending one of their biggest cards? And we got the Watcher. Okay, that was actually pretty high. That was actually pretty high, okay. So that was... Because that starts at 4, right? As most of the 4 pushing cards go. So that's 4 boosts that was on that. Okay. Really curious where this is going to go. Um, Confession Extractor would have been the more handy at the beginning. Um, bloody Good Fun can go. Uh, Confession Extractor can go as well. Okay, that's good. If our opponent passes, please pass. Please pass? They're not going to pass, are they? I can actually get the Brute in hand. 
Sadly, not herself. She can't summon herself to your hand. Okay, we get a smuggler. We get a smuggler. So let's put Octavia Hail down. Uh, I am going to get the Brute. The Brute is better than Ignatius Hail, so I'm just going to get the Brute and confirm that. So we get one card and in turn we need to get rid of another card. Um, these are two bounty cards. I think the best is going to be... Although they're gonna they are going to protect that, right? Purge is good, but Hysteria is better, I think. So let's get rid of Purge. Okay. So now we get Dunka. Dunka is going to get smashed. I need to get rid of Dunka. Um, we don't have any damage dealers either. This is a really... It's been a really, really bad hand. Because that's just going to keep boosting their hands. Um, I don't have a Confession Extractor to increase the damage on Hysteria. And I don't want to use the Hysteria card just yet as well. So actually... That might actually be the the best option here. So let's use Kalkstein and fee the Veil away. That might not have been worth it, but we'll see. And then Isengrim's Council is going to be doing Simlons. Okay, that on top of that. On top of that, we get this shit. Wait, they're targeting my units. Is that going to be double... Oh, double Bountiful Harvest. Okay. So they are getting double hand boosted, probably triple hand boosted every single time. Um, Ignatius, uh, the Brute is now going to be 11 and 2 coins. So that is enough to get me over. So yeah, let's do the Brute now. So that's one point more than our opponent does. Okay, so that means that I can now... Boss, I do start, so the problem is I'm not going to be able to kill what I wanted to kill. There's the Brute, at least, down on the field. It was most likely the better option. Um, it's a hard call at that point. Um, we do get Ignatius, but Ignatius is 7 at the moment. 7, so that's not a good card at the moment. Uh, so let's get rid of Ignatius Hail and get rid of the Confession Extractor. Yeah, okay. Hmm. <laughs> so Jacques first. Um, I don't have any way of dealing damage. So we'll see how that works out for me. So I'm just going to spend my coins on Jacques. Um, normally they can't do 6 damage because they use Sheldon Skaggs already. Nature's Rebuke is only 5. Um, and I can of course still do damage with my leader ability. So we'll see. And our opponent probably is like has like 60 points in hand. But hopefully we'll be able to kill something first. Um, I don't actually need the coins. So I can just use the witch finding now. And spend like um, all the coins on Jacques. Because I don't need the coins. Right now, I don't need the coins. The only thing that I can do with coins is just spend them on Shark. I don't have any spenders remaining. So I need to protect Shark. So that's Force Protector again. That is fine. I can actually try... Oh. Oh. Okay, I can kill that. Uh, so I can do 4 damage with Purge. And then place a bounty on the highest power unit, which is something that will already be happening. Yeah, I'm already placing bounties now with the Witchfinder, but that does, doesn't really matter. I need to get rid of that sorceress, Doblatana. There we go, there it goes. It gives bounty to the Force Protector. I could smash the Force Protector now, but it doesn't really matter at this point. So that is what it is. I still have a Purify. And I will be able to bounty at least Torque. So the only thing that I need to be careful of is that I can destroy anything that now gets a bounty. So either I purify Defender away with Kurt. Or something else is going to happen. But it's it's really tight right now. It all depends on how they handle the, um, the flow of their last three cards. So I'm assuming that their last three cards is something. Then Torque and then um, Aglaïs. So since I don't have last say, I can actually try and kill uh, 
Th wow. Holy shit. Um, well then. Um. Well, what? <laughs> I have no idea what to do with that now. Um, that is interesting. So Fila Vandil is at 25. Okay, we'll see how that will work. So I'm going to hit Force Protector with Hysteria. That's going to kill it. And then I can use the five coins over here. That's going to bounty... Yeah, that's going to bounty Fila Vandil. And now the question is, which is higher? Oh, yeah, okay. It's, it's ugly still. Oh, yeah, I can still damage it, but it's not going to make much of a difference. So... Pilavandrel starts at 4, so it's no use to actually use the Tribute ability. Um, and I can use Graten to kill Pilavandrel. But I feel like this is gonna hurt, so I'm just gonna use the 4 coins on Jacques as well here again. Yeah, Aglaïs is gonna hurt. Aglaïs is gonna be... Oh no! Aglaïs was not enough. Aglaïs was not enough, holy crap. Because remember, we could have still done... So now we ended up at 27 points. Just say that Aglaïs was like 20. Then Aglaïs would go to um, 36. So 36 would only have been 9 points in difference. I had 8 damage still. And I could still put Kurt on, which was also 7 points. So that was 34, um, 42. So that might have been the best, um, indeed, the best call to just pass there. That was really tight. Um, it all came down to Graydon. So if you know that you're facing hand boosting, definitely keep Graydon until last, because uh, yeah, that Philo Vandrel just hurts. And then our next opponent is Monsters. Monsters will definitely hurt, um, well, will definitely feel the hurt, I should say, since we are able to do this shot so much, so much punishment. Monsters doesn't really have a lot of removal, though, so... Um, I'm trying to see if I can set this up correctly. Uh, we have one, two, three, four possible bounties. Um, we have two, all the damage dealers in the world, so we can get rid of one of the Witch Hunter Executioners. We do get the Mara Stranger, which is good. Let's get rid of Shark. Yeah, there we go, Witch Hunter. Yeah, finish with the arm. That's fine. Okay, um, let's use the Tiger's Eye again, as always, and use the Mara Stranger and use her Tribute ability from the very start and boost. Yeah, you saw the effect of that. It just boosted um, six cards in our hands and probably most of the other cards in our deck as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six other cards. So yeah, that's basically what Tamara will do. Um, she will definitely be able to hold her own. I can use Birch here, but I think it's better to first set up a Vigilantes. So we get some extra damage on the um, the Purge bountied units. Uh, Purge is now actually 5 damage. We have 2 Witch Hunters here, because Tamara also counts as a Witch Hunter. So we are going to Purge the um, Self Eater, because that's going to be 5 damage. And then hit the... yeah, that one. The Andrega Larva. So next up, we can set up one of the damage dealers. So that's basically what we're trying to do. If you see that you have the time to do some setup, you can set up a Vigilantes, which will do more damage for your bounties. Then once you hit the bounties, you use a damage dealer. So next up, we're going to use the Witch Hunter Executioner to start hitting those and Dwega Larva down. We are getting locked, and sadly, we don't have a Purify at the moment. So that is sad, but not too sad, because now there's a 7-point unit on the, on the board. So that is also a problem, I think. Uh, now we can kill that Andrega Larva, giving us two more coins, which is more than enough at the moment. And of course, we're going to be bountying that uh, Aguara, because Aguara is uh, is going to be in trouble. Immediately Mamuna, yeah, so on the, um, the selfie, I'm assuming, yeah. Okay, that was a, a bit heavy-handed, I, I would say, but um, we can be just as heavy-handed by putting down the witch finder, although she's gonna hit the highest power unit. I want to be in control at the moment. Um, so I'm just gonna hit the self eater with three damage. Yeah, because otherwise we won't be able to kill something. So self eater with three damage and a bounty, and then we can hit that. We get six in return. So next time we can hit the other unit. Idaran. So yeah, Idaran is gonna definitely get hit by something. 
Uh, so Witch Hunter is gonna bounty the Idaron. And then we can just kill this thing. And that gives us just enough points, because we need to be over our opponent now. So I'm just going to use um, one of the bleeding on Aguara, so they're already working down that damage a little bit. I should have actually put it on Mamuna. Now that I think about it. A one power copy of a monster. That was probably not a good idea. I can actually go slow here. Go slow, use Horse and Freak Show, and kill that first Koshche. Um, and then one more hit on Mamuna. There we go. Next up is going to be the Witchfinder. Oh, wow. You're really going for it, aren't you? Are you kidding me? Okay. Um, I'm going to play the Witchfinder first. Um, and then hit the Koshche with Blood Money. You want to kill those Kosh Chase, they're not welcome here. I can't kill anything else at the moment, so let's hold it off on that. We use our leader ability and applied another bounty, so that's fair enough, I think. Because next up is going to be a pretty hefty hit to our opponent. So we're going to be killing um, Aguara, which is going to give us seven coins. Uh, so we can get the three coins over here. And then hit Aguaya three times. We get seven coins in return. I'm going to now use the Scoundrel. The Scoundrel will allow us to take anything we want from the top of their deck. I know I'm kind of overplaying here, but it's probably for the best. We want to have as many bounties as we can. So I'm going to put down the Scoundrel. Use the Tribute ability and then get... I think we need... We can only do five hits, yeah. So five for Gonkian. And then do this. There we go. We get another five coins out of that. Um, and we can just be nice and leave it at that. And they are actually going to keep going. That is interesting. Uh, so that would force me to play Graydon. Uh, but I'm not going to. Because now they are forced to play their final card. I don't know what it is, but there we go. The Rat Catcher S. It could have been She Who Knows, and that would have been bad, but... I would assume that they would play that earlier, if it was she, who knows. We did play quite a bit of our stronger card, but we also applied a lot of bounties, so that means that our Ignatius Hail and the Brute are going to be very powerful, but of course we need to get them. Uh, so that's another bounty which is good, and we can get Kalkstein out, and we get Tavern Brawl, okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we can just put the Vigilantes down, because we wouldn't have been uh, really set either way. That would have would have hurt otherwise if you <laughs> if you had to play with those cards. That was not the best. So with this deck, you really want to go for longer rounds. So it might not have been the best idea to pass at that point. We get Shock, we get Purge, and we get Gallert. We definitely need one more bounty. So I think I'm going to get rid of Purge. Tavern Brawl is going to be pretty good value against monsters. Um, and we get the Brute. Okay. I think that's fine. I think that is absolutely fine. Gallard is a good spender, and the chances that we get something worse now is probably high. Uh, we can only apply one more bounty, though. Do I get rid of Gallard? I did! And we get Confession Extractor. Okay, uh, might as well just use it immediately then. So that one bounty definitely needs to hit. That is what it is. Um, we can use Jacques now and use the four coins immediately. We kind of lost one coin there, but that's not too much of a problem. I should have maybe boosted that. That might have been a big mistake. If there's a parasite there, I'm gonna lose my Jacques boy. Okay, the beast. The beast. The beast. Uh, the beast is gonna um, be a good target for Tavern Brawl, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna do... So that's gonna go three... Three back, one back, one back. Hmm. But it is basically my only option at this point, unless I want to early profit from the brute. Because the deploy, the boost can be a bit higher than that, I think. Um, no, I'm going to use the brute, the brute already. Um, I'm going to use the brute already. It, it doesn't really matter at this point. I really need to do this in, in the correct order. Um, maybe 10. 10 is going to be hard to hit, I think. Yeah, there we go. 
But our opponent still has 9 points over there, and that is a way better option for Tavern Brawl. 6 and 8, is that right? Yeah. So 6, 2, 4. 6, 2, 4 is 12 points, and we get rid of one of those 2 point engines. Okay. Uh, so 6, 8. There we go. That gets rid of the beasts. Leader ability is gone. We still have 7 coins in the bag. Boost an allied unit by 4. Um, yeah, we're gonna do... Yeah, it's the only thing that we really can do. So Hysteria on the Woodland Spirit. If that gets purified, then I'm in trouble, but... It is what it is, I suppose. No, it does not get purified. Um, so that's gonna be a huge point swing. Because we are gonna take the points as well. So take the Tribute onto Woodland Spirit that is... Not as much as I thought it was going to be, and I should have used my coins first, that was stupid. Yeah, I made a big mistake there. Should have used my coins first, that was 9 coins, and I still had 7 coins, of eight, uh, 2 coins available. 3 points difference, that was really close. Yeah, there's the she who knows now. That was really close, okay, fair enough. So, next up against hand boosting again, against hand boosting again, that is... Okay, fair enough, we know what to do with that. We get Graydon already, so that is good. Uh, Ignatius Hale is probably not the best card to start this off with. So let's get rid of him. We got a lot of bounty cards, so that's something we really like to see. Uh, not a lot of attackers just yet. We do get Tavern Brawl, we do get bloody good fun. So might get rid of one Hysteria card. Uh, we get that, okay. Not Tamara this time, so no boosting all over the place. Um, do we hit that? I really want to hit that. So yeah, let's just do bloody good fun and hit that immediately. Don't want to see those extra special cards coming out. Then we get the Elven Seer. The Elven Seer is always annoying and we can't really do anything else about that. So let's just put the Confession Extractor down. Five coins and we get extra damage on our bounties for, well, the next three bounties will get extra damage. Then we get Bountiful Harvest. Whisperer of Dolblatana. That's actually pretty good, because that means that I can put a bounty on the Elven Seer without actually worrying about anything else. So tree damage and a bounty. There we go. Get an extra hit from uh, that card. And then we're going to have to start dealing some damage, of course. And that is going to be where Horson's Freak Show comes in. So again, we kind of have this cycle going on with applying bounty and then having a damage shield to actually get rid of that. But this might get purified. Nope, it does not. We get another Bountiful Harvest. Which is a Sorceress of Dolblatana, but the Sorceress of Dolblatana is not going to survive the onslaught of what we're going to be uh, dishing out here. So Horson's Freak Show is going to be killing the Elven Seer, which is going to be 4 coins, so we can definitely kill her right now. And then we can kill the Sorceress of Dolblatana as well. We could even kill this thing, but um, we might be able to get some more uh, juice out of that. We can save our coins for now. Although, of course, we will probably be hit with an Nature's Rebuke um, right now. Ooh. A Defender. Fair enough. I can actually bounty the Defender then. Then we get an extra hit on that. Uh, we can hit it once. That's going to be it for now. I can actually use my leader ability to take out the defender in a minute. And then we get the purify, uh, which is going to be too much. It is going to be too much. So now it's 15 going on to 16 points. I can only do so much. It is purified now, however. I'm just going to hold off. They don't really seem to be doing all that much hand boosting. I mean, usually I do want to have last say in matchups like this, but yeah, that is just too overboard. And even with the card advantage, the last say, they tend to play one of their bigger cards earlier. So we're going to have to see. Um, Ignatius Hail and the Brute. Uh, I'm going to get rid of Ignatius Hail. We only play two uh, bounties just yet. So we're going to be having to see about that. Well, the rest of the setup is pretty good, pretty solid. Although we don't have a lot of bounty apply application yet. Tavern Brawl might be good. 
but it's not guaranteed and we have no other damage dealer. Yeah, this might be a bit awkward, but we'll see how this works. Okay, we get a pass, um, which is fine. I'm going to just play Vigilantes and uh, work from there. Okay, no push from our opponents. Which, of course, they also want to have long rounds for the hand boosting. I want to have long rounds just to be able to maximize the damage output that we do. And now we start, so that might actually be good as well. Um, again, I don't need Ignatius Hail. It's going to be more painful, more trouble than it's worth. We still have a Confession Extractor in the deck. So I think it might be better to leave that out and get yeah, the Scoundrel. Okay. We get the Scoundrel... I could do Jacques first. Jacques first and then Gellert on the two back thingies. That might actually be pretty good. So Jacques first. And then we can use Gellert afterwards. We can even just use Gellert on, uh, on Jacques. Gellert is going to be way more efficient using it like that. Um, we are not setting up witch, find, uh, witch hunters though. And we don't have any purifiers anymore as well. I'm just gonna hit it, I think, with blood money. That's something that really needs to die. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the best thing to do. So let's just hit Dunka with blood money, uh, destroy it in one go, and then use Gallert. He will give us two more coins. I'm just gonna boost uh, Jacques uh, to eight. Uh, since there hasn't been a lot of boosting just yet, I think I'm just gonna boost him to 10. Um, then the Flame Rose Footman to 5. Uh, two more coins left, that's pretty good. I can use that on the Tribute of the Scoundrel, so... Once our opponent starts to actually play units, we can actually use the Witchfinder. Um, okay. Okay, that's good. And now they're starting the hand boosting cycle. There we go. Opponent is deciding to boost whatever they want, and we're going to be playing the Witchfinder next. So there we go, Witchfinder. I can actually boost her to 9 with the Poison. But now that does mean that I don't get the um, the tribute, but I have extra coins, so that doesn't really matter. So Purify um, also isn't gonna matter, I think. So Purge is gonna do four. The Scoundrel can actually... I'm just gonna use the Scoundrel as is. Because uh, I'm gonna be able to, yeah. Just no tribute, and yeah, that was what I was hoping for. So we got that. And we just destroy it in one go. Um, that should be it. Okay, that was a good call. Usually most of the Squiretel units are all four. Um, so I'm all for that. Okay, Circle of Life on to Gellert. Which can of course not be boosted. Um, I can hit it with Hysteria. And that will kill it in one go, so... That's going to give us four extra coins. Um, I'm going to use one on the Flaming Rose Footman over here from Gellert. Yeah, one is enough. I think one is enough. Uh, we have still only two Witchfinders on the board. And we're still applying bounties. So Circle of Life is going to hit Gellert now. So that's going to be boosting them. Um, yeah. Uh, the only thing that we now can do is continue doing the hand thingy. Uh, so we're going to get five coins, so this is the Brute. The Brute. Yeah, I can just keep going with this. There we go. 16 points of Jacques, that's going to be a juicy Sheldon Skaggs. But they're going to be forced to start playing units eventually. There we go, Sheldon Skaggs. Hitting the, um, the Witchfinder there. And I'm not going to be seeing Purge anymore. I'm not going to be able to use that. So let's just hit Sheldon Skaggs for six. Um, and then just have two more hits over here. Because we're going to be getting six coins. Even 19. We're going to be getting six coins in a minute. Because Sheldon starts at six, right? I always forget about that. But he starts at six. Yeah. And now we got Simlos. Simlos is going into Nature's Rebuke. Okay, so let's kill the scoundrel and then put, yeah, bounty on Simlos, I suppose. So there we go. And now I don't have enough coins to actually kill um, 
sim loss with that, so I'm just gonna hold off. Please put something next to that. No. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm a bit of I'm in a bit of trouble here because the last cards are gonna be big, uh, but I'm not gonna be able to kill any of them. So I'm just gonna use Graydon. Graydon is gonna go. Yeah. Okay. That that's something I can still work with. Um, so Graydon is gonna kill Simlas. I'm not gonna use a tribute and kill Simlas. That gives us eight coins. So that's gonna be enough to actually kill. Um, yeah, her. Uh, um, yeah, not it Italy. 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 Okay. Please put something next to that. They're gonna be. Yeah, they're not gonna be doing that. Wait, they passed. Okay. Wow. Okay then. F fine. The Again, this this is the exact same thing as the first match we did. For some reason, they must not have enough points. Although with an Aglaiz boosted like that, that should not have been a problem. If that was Torque and Aglaiz left, that seems like the better option, but apparently not. Because Torque is going to be high and Aglaiz is going to be high, but might not have been as high as they would wanted it to be. Uh, might have been overestimating that. Okay, that was the uh, second hand boosting killed by bounties. But I think that shows off the flow of this deck um, quite enough. So it's kind of, tr you try to balance the amount of damage you can do with the amount of bounties you can place. We were a bit awkward at the very end there because probably Tavern Brawl would have been nothing, um, which was uh, yeah very tricky against something like that. But otherwise, yeah, I think the monster deck was the clearest example of uh, how you should not play it. I think I overspent in the first round, which uh, forced me out of my better cards by the uh, end of the final round. So we kind of lost by only three points. Um, but yeah, it did show off the power of this deck. And especially against hand boosting, which is very strong right now. If you keep Graydon until the very end and you manage to win round one, you definitely can uh, smack some uh, elves around. Um, and especially also against, um, don't underestimate the power of this deck against Skelliger right now. Because you can use the Purifies to get rid of the Veils. And that Tavern Brawl is really good against Malicene. Um, same for Graydon, if you purify that, you can just kill something very, very juicy. The only thing that you don't have since this is a um, Devotion deck is a Banish. So that is one of the holes in this deck, but we really want a Devotion for Shaq. Um, if you don't want Devotion, you can get rid of Shaq, get another Spender in and get something like a Squirrel or a Xavier Lemons in as well. Uh, especially since you can just swap out Ignatius Hail for Xavier as well, if you want to get rid of Devotion. And that's it for this deck guide. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Grantage. It's been uh, a long time coming since I've been able to do a couple of deck guides, one after the other. So this is the second one of this month and we're definitely going to be doing um, I think two more so um, definitely check that out leave a comment in the comment section down below just to give me some advice if you have tips for to improve this deck if you have just feedback on how you played this deck and uh, if you really enjoyed it or not uh, it definitely has its problems sometimes but it's a very powerful deck nonetheless you can find the link to the deck in to the play grant website in the description down below um, so you can check that out as well, import it as you want, and uh, yeah, try it out for yourself. So thank you guys enormously for watching, and hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye, and stay nerdy.